uh, we have Jarvis uh, with us who will talk about, yeah, we talk about API-driven business models, regulation, but the question is like how to position the API-driven architecture to support digital transformation. And this is why uh, you, uh, you, Jarvis, you will uh, tell us. Hello, Jarvis, how are you? Good, how are you? Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you really well. Uh, so yeah, you are from Indian Farm Insurance and uh, you will be uh, telling uh, your story about API-driven architecture. That's right. Thank you very much. Okay, I assume you can see my screen okay? Yeah, it's full screen, it's perfect. Okay, great. Well, thank you for uh, having me to be on the stage to share with you the topic about how to position API-driven architecture to support a digital transformation. Um, so uh, this is Jarvis. I'm uh, the chief architect at Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance. And um, this is still summer. I don't want to disappoint you guys by showing a full picture yet, but as we all know, the seasonal transformation is there. It will be coming, and it's beautiful and a wonderful thing. So when you look at the nature, that nature understands the importance of adapting to the surrounding in order to grow and survive, um, business is actually no difference. It's the same situation to run a business where to find a way to adapt to growth and to survive in this very competitive landscape. So. When we talk about digital transformation, uh, the footprint is everywhere. Um, I probably don't want to um, spend too much time here because uh, the audience I know today is mostly from insurance industry and, and financial sector. You have seen many of this kind of footprint. Like in the healthcare industry, you have seen the online medical checkup uh, via smartphone, uh, AI using for diagnostic and care robot, all those things are coming. And API is there to help to enable all this kind of movement. And then the robotic restaurant, believe it or not, is actually coming. In some country, they are actually already in operational model. And API is there to connect to make all these things happen as well. In the cosmetic industry, seeing is believing. Augmented reality is really there to transform this experience for the consumer. And API is also behind the scene to power to make all these kind of thing happen. And we talk about some creative industry like the filming. They are also using robot as a stunt double. So save some life there and save some, some bone breaking. So API is also there to help to control to make all these things happening. Even in the farming industry, sometimes you think about farming as a really kind of like a data industry, but actually it's not. Farming industry actually is using a lot of high tech um, um, uh, technologies right now. So some POC are doing using a farm a robot to scare away the bears or whatnot. Guess what? API is all there to make everything happen. So when we talk about digital transformation, so in the past, um, there's many different push and demand and driver from various different stage. But in the past year and a half, we're all still living in this kind of surreal, crazy time. COVID, you probably see many of this kind of uh, survey. COVID is really driving the consumer behavior. It's really the force behind the digital transformation, the digital channel. Demand has never been any greater before. So we know we want to transform. We want, know we want to kind of adapt to change, but how to make this thing happen and enable, uh, we strongly believe that API is there. But when we talk about um, try to change and adapt, a lot of the time, what we know is become the obstacle for us to get to the next level. We get used to doing certain things the way how we've been doing is so hard to change, especially in some way financial sector or insurance uh, uh, business. If we are in a business in the last 30, 40 years, you know we have mainframe, we have mid-range uh, ICUs, all this kind of thing running our business. Those technology are there. They will still likely be there for a long time. There's a joke saying that COBOL never dies, right? So, but how do we find a way to position to expose and enable some of those business functions to expose them to do more enabler? API is there. But in our experience, a lot of the time we notice that people try to run API like a project. Project has a beginning day and an end date, and API is not. API is a journey, it's a program, it's something that should be in your uh, IT and business long-term strategies to go. It's not just a project. So it's even to the point that we call this API-driven architecture. 
And in many insurance business that you have um, many different backend core system, they're running your policy, running your client, running your uh, claims and many different system. So API actually in nowadays is becoming the abstraction layer to as abstract the core system. And it's also the glue like the previous presentations, the glue to tie all these kind of components together to become an enabler to create a flexible business architecture. So API, it should be the center of the architecture, okay? So this is our experience through many years of the uh, integration enablement, but it's easy to say, uh, we need to use API to position digital transformation and whatnot, but what are the things that we have to do in a more concrete way to enable this kind of movement. And today I would like to share the six things that we believe are really helping us to make this kind of journey and transformation. So hopefully at the end of this uh, session, at least you remember these six things. So I'll try to go one by one here. So the first one is this thing called API product owner. Now, uh, if nobody owns it, then everybody owns it. When everybody owns it, then nobody owns it. So we all heard about this kind of analogy before. So for API project or API product, a lot of the time it started with a project, especially when your company's API maturity is still at the initial stage and not to the mature stage yet, that usually how the API will start and evolve. When that happens, API become part of the project part of the project implementations. And up to a certain point when the API becomes successful, more reusability drive out of the API, it's critical to have an API product owner to manage and control the overall landscape of that API or a suite or libraries of APIs because each project has their own driver, the date, the uh, requirement or whatnot. So a lot of the time they look at the need for the API from a very niche uh, viewpoint. We need to have an API product owner that can look at things holistically to see what's the overall uh, evolution of all this particular API endpoint or this, a this suite of APIs. It's important in our, in our experience that to have a product owner that can oversee this or else the API could become easily out of control. So with a product owner, the next thing that we recommend to adopt to um, be positioned to is to have an API development team. A lot of the time when API start to happen in the company, usually it's part of the project, just like previously mentioned. But in our experience, it's very, very helpful and economical, uh, flexible, uh, time market-wise to create a centralized team they're responsible to handle all the reusable APIs. And for those non-reusable APIs, it's okay to maintain and support by the project team themselves. But to have that centralized API development team, it really push our API landscape to the next level very quickly. It takes a little bit of time to get the team evolved and established. But once that's in place, have a solid uh, tech lead and the, um, and the scrum master or not, is a very helpful thing for the entire company. So we strongly recommend to have an API development team. And the next thing is this thing called roadmap. It's kind of tied to the first point that I mentioned uh, is that anything that's worthwhile for the long term, for uh, good for the company, for long term perspective, should have a roadmap. It's something to help to set the, the priority and direction. So in our experience, for certain important API, we try to have a roadmap to say that today, this is our current state of this road and this API, this endpoint, uh, this um, component, and what we can do with this post operation, this put operation, this is what we can do. We structure a roadmap in, in, instead of to, for the next few quarters, what this API will evolve into. So that we publish those roadmap to get feedback. So each quarterly planning meeting, we get input to kind of continue to enhance our roadmap, to move certain things around. This was really helpful to show the project team where they plan for the next quarter or so they know what are the things each and every single API will start 
being available for them to plan on the stuff for the project. If the project seems like they don't, they're lacking of something, they can come to the API product owner to discuss, to figure out, can we move something around and so on and so forth. But we need to be able to have something to showcase what is coming up so the teams can prepare for that as well. So we found that API roadmap is a very helpful, important thing as well. The next thing is the architecture. Now, APIs, just like wheat, just like a wild forest, it can grow out of control very easily and rapidly. And it can be like that or can become a very well-planned garden that everything's meticulously uh, planned, groomed, trimmed uh, very well. When you walk into it, you feel like you are in a Zen garden, you feel great about it. So API is no different than that. It, it, we need to have a uh, API architecture to help to guide the overall API direction, to guide the API development teams, the centralized team, and all this uh, project team that create APIs. It needs to have a centralized um, architecture in place. What are the architectural vision? What are the standard and guidelines? That actually transition to next topic is standard and guidelines. So <clears throat> as previous slide, API can be very flexible. Now we all sometimes hear that RESTful API, which is most of the API implementation, uh, besides those graph, graph, uh, graph uh, API, does something like that. But for the RESTful API, sometimes you hear that, oh, it's based on HTTP standard. So we already have a standard. But as you dig into the details, it can go many different directions, how you design that particular API, starting from the endpoint of the API to the structure of the JSON object to many different things. There's many ways to skin the API. So as a company, as an architecture from the standpoint, it's important to have a standard and guidelines. And as we all know that there's a difference between standard and guidelines. Standard is something that we have to enforce. Guideline is something just more like a um, recommendation, suggestion for team to adapt to make this decision on, to adopt or not. So we have to make those clear and provide the standard on how to develop API. And in our experience, <clears throat> for we, we spent through so much painful process that we strongly recommend do not attempt to reinvent the wheel to create your fresh brand new API standard go online, find some open uh, API standard. Many companies, they publish those things, adopt one of those, and then modify and enhance that towards your company's and your IT division needs. That's much easier than try to come up with something brand new. But also watch out though, some of those API standards out there are like a dissertation, like a phone book. You also don't want to have a ginormous standard that you bore all the API developers. You want to find a way to have just enough of a meet or diff even different level of the standard to provide the guide uh, to provide to the API development community. In our experience, it's really important because uh, earlier stage, we do not have a strong standard and guideline. You start seeing API popping up in the uh, API store. It's like, wow, are we even in the same company or not? So from an internal API consumer, or when you talk about external third-party API consumer, it can be very confusing and very difficult to adopt and, and uh, make use of those APIs. So API standard and guidelines is also a very important thing to strongly recommend to implement. Last but not least is this thing called API and data governance. All those JSON little objects within the APIs, they are nothing but data. Data, as you all heard and know, is, we call that data is the new oil, and they need to be managed and governed. So when we design the API within the JSON building blocks, we try our best to make them reusable. We try to have a data, data dictionary, uh, data definition of all those, all those JSON uh, data objects so that we can try our best to reuse them. We also can tie into the data dictionary so that we can have a holistic approach how how to use this data at different stage of the API uh, life cycle. So, this is another thing that we learned that we feel like is very important to do because many of these things that we're talking about here are largely non-functional requirement. When you are in a project time crunch, you are pushing for due dates, many of these things will just become the technical debt. 
but we strongly believe through our experience, many years of running this API, these are the things that really have to build into a program. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a journey and a program. It's not just a project. So just to conclude this, there are six things that we strongly recommend to position for the API-driven architecture and eventually can power the digital transformation, which are the product owner, development team, roadmap, architecture standard guidelines, and data governance. So one more thing. Uh, in our experience, what we notice is that we are smarter than we. We try, we tend to, at the beginning, we have a small group of people to define all those API standard and structure and uh, whatnot. And we found out that the more that we can absorb the comments and feedback from the API developers, no matter what's their ranking, we feel like we get a whole bunch more feedback. And later on, we wrote a snowball out to even to um, the business owner to different um, uh, IT group, we start creating kind of like a um, community of practice to try to capture more input. We found that we really enhance our API uh, maturity to a better stage. And when you start working with different people, when you are designing those API definition guidelines standard, be ready to disagree uh, because we all have different mental mindset, mental model, where we all look at different things, try to use those API to represent the business concern differently. So just be ready for debate and ready for the fun, ready for the fun ride. But at the end, it's all worth it. So back to the opening statement, seasonal transformation is a beautiful and wonderful thing. It can be. It's just a matter of how we can prepare to position to make this as a beautiful experience instead of a harsh winter. We strongly believe that making, uh, strongly consider those six things that we recommend, put them into some sort of a program to implement. After a while, it may take some time to get it mature, but it will really help to drive the digital transformation. So that's all that I have for today to share. Would you have any questions that I can help to answer? Thank you, Robin Jarvis. Uh, we have one question. When the regulation comes into an industry, um, like how does it may impact the API-driven architecture when in regulation involves APIs directly? Um, so it depends on what kind of regulation you're talking about. We are in the insurance industry, so we're, our regulation are not as strenuous as the, like, the banking industry. But we do have some regulation we have to meet and face. So. Um, most of them are security related. So uh, we have been putting a security in mind from the beginning. So when we design many of those API, how we mask those data, how we um, uh, encrypt those data in flight and, and, and rest, we will try to plan for those. But in terms of how to face the regulation, uh, it really depends. Um, so what we have done is that we have an API uh, definition group. We have a committee. Uh, usually for any standardized changes or regulation, we come into that group first to try to come up with a plan and then come up with some um, approach to try to push into the implementation. So another thing I did not put into one of those six items is to have a uh, definition group or team to try to oversee those kind of things so that we can have a holistic approach as an enterprise, how to implement those kind of uh, changes to face those regulation. Yeah, I think the question was like, a lot of people think insurance will be one of the next industries to be um, obliged to open APIs in different places of the world. And so at that point, will the API driven architecture will be just to follow the regulation so at the end we just say okay we have to open or it does the regulation has to be thought before even the design of the api uh try to understand your question so you're saying should the regulation be is is regulation when the regulation comes and talk about apis is it a regulation first or an api first architecture you see well, I think a typical consulting answer here is it depends. <laughs> in the insurance industry, sometimes we have those kind of regulation coming that, for example, during the COVID situation, we have to stop, uh, we have to continue to honor some kind of policy. So for those regulation come, we have to stop everything, but to honor those kind of regulation. So it kind of really depends. So it's kind of back to the, uh, your architecture, how flexible you, you, you have there. Yeah, so you talk about seasons. 
you know, digital transformation is seasonal and, you know, we have uh, four seasons, at least for now. <laughs> so does that mean that actually the, the role of the API architects is to make the architecture evolve with trends that evolve every 10 years? This is what you wanted to share with us? <laughs> Um, my thing about seasonal transformation is more towards the digital transformation, but you make a good point about even within the API development. I have a, I have been in the integration business for many years. So we started with what this thing called SOAP, uh, SOAP-based web service, and then it XML-based HTTP and then uh, RPC style, all those kind of thing. So as a technologist, you always have to be uh, plug in to the trend, to the movement. Th that's no question about it. Uh, this RESTful API is popular right now. Let's see how long it will ride. So we have to continue to, to learn, continue to find different ways to adopt to the changes. So uh, I don't think as an integration um, architect or whatnot, we can settle down on one technology and, and expect it to ride for the next 10 years. That, I don't think that's possible. New trend, new way of doing things, graph, uh, GL, all those kind of things are coming. We, we have to start learning to, to adopt to it. And then, yeah, and then also different way to implement that also evolving and changing too. Started a long time ago, just a whole Tomcat container. Now you have to look into the uh, container strategy. So it's all evolving, all changes. It's like seasonal thing, like you said, we have to look at the trend, look at the wave. Uh, we cannot stop it. The learning is ongoing. That type that you might talk about is a journey, it's a program, it's a long way to go. So we have a question. Uh, in digital transformation, who are the main sponsors or supporters yeah. of API architects? Um, in our company, the main sponsor is our executive director of the application development. Uh, so it's application driven uh, as of this point. And in some company that I know is uh, another CTO division to try to tr drive that movement, to drive that change. But depends on your company's uh, nature and whether you're at the initial stage or not. I feel like if you're at the initial stage, try to find a sponsor that sponsored a big project. I think that would be a good way to go and then continue to drive and demonstrate the value, especially the reusability. We used to track each and every single services long time ago, now we call it API. We track the usage, how many different applications use that for how long, use those metrics, use those numbers to continue to evolve into the next stage. Eventually you want to get to the sponsor at the executive uh, VP level or the CTO, CIO level to be a sponsor. And maybe our, the last question we have, uh, how to align API-driven business with API-driven architecture? Oh, API-driven business. Wow, that, that's an interesting term. Um, if you can talk about that term, that sounds like you're in a luxury mode that your business are quite technical, that they, they understand APIs. So to align those two, if you talk about in that kind of maturity of the company, um, you have to get the business and the API architect closely lined up uh, to, to work together very closely. Uh, I think, I'm not sure what's, there's no other way. You have to just communicate as much as you can. Yeah, and because recently in, an, uh, in a previous conference, we've received company insurers who are actually now thinking all their future product will be just APIs delivered to be embedded into other people applications. So this is why I think we had this question. Yeah, yeah. And I think well, the reason I mentioned that you're lucky to have the business understand API because in some other situation in, in our past experience is that you have to educate the business to understand, to think in terms of API, to think how API can drive the project to make it better so they can plan the project accordingly. So that's very wide spectrum uh, of this understanding. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Jarvis, for being with us. Uh, again, you will be, uh, I hope you will be our guest again in, in our next conferences. Thank you for, uh, it was also kind of uh, poetic, not only just technical, uh, you know, to, uh, thank you for, uh, for that, uh, for delivering that at API Days. And